Hi everyone, Kevin Brown here. Today I'm going to talk about the covariance and the correlation coefficient. We're still under descriptive statistics, but these are two statistical tools that allow us to get at relationship. So I've got two variables here. I've got the temperature and I've got ice cream sales. And now I want to look at how these two relate to one another. Now, in statistics, when we talk about relationship or association or correlation, we're talking about how two things move in tandem. As one goes up, the other goes down. As one goes up, the other goes up. Or no relationship, no discernible pattern to how the two are moving together. But in, in essence, that's what we talk about with relationship. How are two things moving together? So we have two different tools here that will allow us to get at this idea. The first is the covariance, and the second is the correlation coefficient. So let me write out the formulas for this very quickly. So for the covariance, we have the sum of xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar and we're dividing that by n minus 1. And this is denoted by S of xy. That's our covariance. The correlation coefficient is similar to it. This is denoted as R of xy is equal to the covariance that we find above divided by the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y. Hopefully you can see that down there. So what do we need to know in order to figure this out? Well, first of all, we need to know our xi minus x bar times our yi minus y bar, and then we're going to add those up. We're going to summarize those. Now, to save some time, I went ahead and did this. So we've got our xi minus x bar column. We've got our yi minus y bar column. And then we've got the sum of xi minus x bar times yi minus y bar. So as you recall, if we were trying to find out the standard deviation, we would be figuring out this column right here. In other words, we're looking at variation when we take our index of x values and we're subtracting that from their mean. So if there's a lot of variation, we'll see a big difference here. If there's very little differentiation, this value will be small. We're doing the same thing with y, and we're multiplying these two together in order to get this column here. So this 37.5 is negative 7.5 times 5 equals 37.5. Then I sum those here and I get a value of 255. So that is my numerator for the covariance, 255. And I'm dividing by my sample size minus 1. So 8 minus 1, because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that is equal to 7. So 255 divided by 7 is 36.43. So let's take a, take a moment and pause here. My covariance is 36.43. What does that mean? What does that tell us? Well, it doesn't actually tell us a lot, and its meaning is hard to discern other than the fact that we do know whatever relationship there is between temperature and ice cream sales, it's a positive relationship. And how do we interpret that? As our temperature goes up, we know that our ice cream sales will go up in some way. That's a positive relationship. So again, I want to back up just a moment and talk about this. Temperature is our x value. Ice cream sales, that is our y value. And if we think of the xy chart, we've got our y value here, x here. So as we are moving along on the x, as x goes up, we're assuming that y goes up as well. And this would be a positive linear relationship if it's uh, characterized by a straight line. So that's important to point out what's taking place here when we say that there's some kind of a positive relationship. What we don't know, though, is how strong is that relationship? What's the nature of that relationship? That's something that we don't know. And so we go down here to the correlation coefficient which can tell us a lot more about the nature of this relationship. So recall that the correlation coefficient goes between a positive one and a negative one. And the closer you are to a positive one, or if you're at one exactly, that means there is a perfectly positive relationship between the two variables. 
the closer you are to a negative one, that means there is a perfectly negative relationship between the two variables. And of course, the closer you are to zero, that means there's no relationship between those two variables. So let's figure out the, the extent of the relationship between temperature and ice cream here in this, this small data set. So we've already figured out that our covariance is 36.43. And in another video, I showed you how to do the mean and the standard deviation. And we found that the mean is 73.5 and 7.19 standard deviation for temperature, 13 for ice cream, 5.13 standard deviation. So I'm actually going to take these standard deviations, the standard deviation for x, 7.19, times the standard deviation for y, 5.13. And if you were to divide 36.43, by 7.19 times 5.13, if you round up, you get a value of 0.99. So almost 1. So that 0.99 means we're way over here on the correlation coefficient. So therefore, we can say, based upon this data set, there appears to be a very strong, very, very strong relationship between temperature and ice cream sales. And it's a positive relationship. As our temperature goes up, our ice cream sales go up as well. They're moving very closely in with one another. A more uh, statistically accurate way of saying that would be that the, the variation in temperature explains to a high degree, is highly related to the variation in ice cream sales. Okay, so that is covariance and correlation coefficient.